Hello everyone and welcome to this video where I'm going to talk about Open Zeppelin. I'm going to show you how we can use Open Zeppelin in the right way to cut your development time in half. So this is incredibly important for us people that are consultants or developers and especially when it comes to smart contracts because smart contracts are complicated and Open Zeppelin can through their library of well-tested contracts help us cut our development time a lot. And I also see a lot of people using it the wrong way. So I want to make sure that people understand the structure and how you should use it. But first of all, I want, wanted to show you the amazing offer that we have over at the Ivan on Tech Academy. Because you all know that I run the Ivan on Tech Academy together with Ivan on Tech. We do the courses together. And right now we have an insane Christmas deal, which you can uh, be a part of. So you can get access to all of our courses for only $1 the first month. Uh, the courses right now, of course, are the Deep Fundamentals course, the Smart Contracts Programming course, and the Blockchain Business Masterclass. And in the beginning of next year, we're going to release the Ethereum Game Programming. So this will be a real interesting course for you guys that are programmers, as well as the Smart Contract Programming course. Many of you have already taken it. I know that. Uh, but now you have an exclusive offer here that, that uh, you can be a part of. And uh, click the link in the description if you wanted to uh, want to take part of this offer and become a part of the academy if you're already uh, not a member. The plan is to next year to release one course every month. So I want to do more uh, developer style courses there as well. So we will be pumping out new content, but it will only be available to our members. So make sure that you click the link in the description and go get that discount right now. And then we'll continue with the video. So. What we're going to want to do first is open up your terminal here and we're going to go into any directory that we like here uh, do, 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 do. open z test i'm going to make a new directory i'm going to go into there and here we'll have to initialize a new npm directory so if you don't have node.js installed you need to do that but otherwise just click through there and then we can do npm install open zeppelin dash solidity this is the library in question which contains a bunch of pre-written smart contracts that um, are very useful because they are heavily tested and heavily used by many projects many icos for example have used these contracts and they're very reliable it doesn't mean they are completely safe of course there can always be bugs but these contracts have been tested and audited a lot so the chances are minimal but of course you never know so in node modules now we have open zeppelin solidity but we can go back and we're going to create a new file here so let's do contract.sol or let's name it token.sol because we're going to use this to create a token and once you have that we're going to open up atom which is the editor that i use you can use whichever editor you like so once you do have this project open here we can take a look at the node modules and open zeppelin solidity and in contracts you will find all of the contracts and in tests you'll find all of the tests that you can use but what's interesting here is that if you look take a look at the token for example because here you have the folders of different contracts in different categories so you have tokens you have crowd sales you have access so you have different roles you have owners and uh, minter roles and so on well here you have the ownership actually so the ownable contract really important today we want to look at contracts and uh, the structure that open zeppelin uses is that they have these um, they divide the contracts into like sub sub contracts with that contain different functionality so you could uh, pick the components that you want to have in your token and inherit them all into your own token and therefore building this module uh, modular token of yours so let's say we wanted we, we always need the base ERC20 token. This is contains all the base functionality. It has the balances and all of that. So that's what we want to start with. If we go back into our token.solidity, we're going to do this pragma first, 0 0.4.24. And now we're going to import this. See, import open zeppelin dash solidity. So we're going to import this file here contract slash solidity. Let's see, what is it? Uh, no, not Solidity. Contract, uh, token, ERC20, slash, ERC20.sol. That's what we want to import. And then we'll create our own 
token here and I always call this Philip token I don't uh, I don't have any better name for it and this is going to inherit from ERC20 so Philip token is ERC20 and then that means that we're using this class here we're inheriting from this contract here and this um, contract as you can see the open sampling owner doesn't actually have any um, any constructor so we don't we have nothing to do there all we have is um, is our own constructor. so if we want to take any uh, let's see constructor we would take our own arguments and add them into here but I'm not sure if we have anything that we want to uh, to do here we have let's see do we have a mint function do, do, do. now we don't have any real functionality here so if we actually want a usable token we want to uh, implement some more of these components here so maybe we want an ERC20 detailed instead because then we would have name we would have symbol we would have decimals so maybe we want that instead and uh, this actually is also a base class so this uh, do doesn't inherit from the ERC20 class that I talked about before but uh, let's actually see here do, 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 do. let's say we wanted, an, we wanted a mintable token but we also want uh, these details here as name symbol and decimals so that means that we want the ERC20 detail contract and the mintable contract which allows us to mint new tokens if we are the minter so since this ERC20 mintable actually inherits from ERC20 base contract, we don't need to inherit from this in our base contract. All we need to do is inherit from this and from this. So that is what we're going to do. We're going to change this to ERC20 detailed and we're going to import ERC20 mintable. And then we're going to implement them here. So detailed and ERC20 mintable. And in our constructor, we do need to take some arguments here because we needed the name, if you remember, and we needed the, I'm oh, sorry, it's going to be string name, of course, string name, we're going to have string symbol, and we need uint8 decimals. I think that's it. That's all we needed. Yes. And these are then going to get, let's see, passed on to the parent constructor so erc20 detailed uh, name symbol decimals like that and then our constructor needs to be public and then here if we want to set use any other logic here we can um, we can do that in our own constructor so maybe for example, we wanted to mint tokens right away, we could do that here. So we could add another constructor argument here with uh, amount. And I'm not going to do that now, but we could then do uh, underscore mint. And then who's going to own the token? So maybe message.sender. We're going to get the tokens and then amount here. We could also leave this completely empty, of course. It would just be like this. Um, and what I want you to take away from this is how we build our own contract file. We don't copy any files from Open Zeppelin. We don't copy their contracts. All we do is we use, we build our own parent contract and then we use, sorry, our own base contract. And then we inherit from these two Open Zeppelin contracts instead. And we implement their constructor here. If they do have a constructor, the mintable doesn't have a constructor, so we don't need that. But this is uh, how we use Open Zeppelin, and the same would be true if you wanted to implement a crowd sale. That's exactly the same thing. Here you have a bunch of different crowd sale contracts, and um, you implement them in exactly the same way. You pick the components that you want in your crowd sale, and you use them like that. And this means that I don't have to implement any own code in order to build an ERC20 token. We've done a video previously on this channel where we coded our own ERC20 token, and it took us like 15 minutes. But with this, it will probably take, take me five minutes to do it because we can, we can just inherit ERC20, boom, we're done. And plus, you don't have to risk writing your own contract since you might implement bugs and so on. While the Open Zeppelin contracts are hopefully 
free of bugs, we don't know of course, but they are heavily tested and heavily maintained by a large community. That is all I wanted to uh, say for today. If you enjoyed this type of video, hit the like button. If you didn't like it, hit that dislike button. Uh, leave a comment uh, with any feedback or suggestions for future videos. And also make sure that you're subscribed to the channel. I know a lot of you are watching without being subscribed. Make sure that you are subscribed so that you don't miss any future videos. Also go to christmas.ivanontech.com if you want to learn more about this type of stuff. We have in-depth courses there about development. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing all of you in the next video.